Hello, Cedar Rapids and the surrounding area. Tim Nash here with Skogman Realty. Welcome to Lunch with Friends. I am very excited to be interviewing Tad Ennin. Mm -hmm. And Tad is the director of Cedar Rapids Opera. Now, this is what I have trouble with because I don't work, I don't work in music. So I think there's like, there's the Cedar Rapids uh, Orchestra. Mm -hmm. There is a choir. Yep, there's a couple choirs. There's a couple yeah. choirs, and now and there's an opera. Mm -hmm. This is the opera. This is not any of those other items. This is all about Cedar Rapids Opera, which Tad is actually a member of Daybreak Rotary, Daybreak, mm -hmm. um, and I didn't even know that Cedar Rapids had an opera until uh, Tad came and became a member and talked to us about it. So, and he did a little presentation for mm -hmm. us and everything. So, so awesome. So, I guess tell us a little bit about like the history of Cedar Rapids Opera and and whatnot. So Cedar Rapids Opera started in 1998. We're in our 26th season. Okay. It was founded by Daniel Kleinkinect, who is still our artistic director and founder. Um, and throughout these past 26 years, we've put main stage productions. We've step, established a young artist program. And the young artist program started in 2002. And the young artist program, I'll kind of explain more about that as we go, but really is our opportunity to dive into the education of not only the audience and the community, but right. of the performers and the singers that create this art that we love. Well, and I'm sure that like, in this day and age, opera is almost something that you have to seek out. Even if you want to do opera, like if you want to perform, mm -hmm. it's like you said, you, you almost, you have to help educate, educate your performers on, I don't know, what's out there, techniques and, and all that. Correct. Stuff. Yeah. I mean, you get a degree in vocal performance. Sure. And a degree in vocal performance under classical music generally encompasses opera. There's mm -hmm. choral and opera, and they kind of all go together. I mean, good singing is good singing. And right. so that even goes into musical theater. I mean, I have a lot of opera colleagues that sing musical theater and find a lot of success. So I have friends that I grew up with in opera training programs because I'm a singer myself. Right. Um, I'm not going to ask him Broadway. to sing. He's right. been asked to sing, but I'm not going to ask you to do that Thank here you. in O's Grill on Center Point Road. <laughs> so it's just been um, kind of wonderful to see good singing just keep going out. So I have multiple degrees in singing. I have my undergraduate degree in vocal performance, my master's in vocal performance and pedagogy, and my doctorate in vocal performance and pedagogy. So pedagogy is the teaching or right. study of how to teach singing. Sure. Um, and so all these degrees and all this schooling – was paired with a lot of young artist programs around the country. And so my start with Cedar Rapids Opera began in the young artist program. Okay. So that was my first kind of introduction to Cedar Rapids Opera. So I was in the young artist program. And then I came back a few years later. Well, actually the next year, end of the next year mm -hmm. to be a principal artist. And I did that a few times. And then I've been a stage director. So I directed the children's opera production, Very which cool. I'll talk a little bit more about. Okay. That's the other branch of our education and our kind of our community impact that we yeah. do. So I directed that, and then I became a production manager, which oversaw the production in January, mm -hmm. which is our main production. And then now, this last, just over a year ago, I started as general director. Awesome. So I'm an Iowa farm boy that grew up in northern Iowa on a farm. Yep. And I met my wife in undergrad, but she's from Cedar Rapids. And after we both finished all of our years of schooling, this was the place to come back Good to. Good place to land. Great, exactly. This land, is the place yeah. we always kind of wanted to come back to and where we wanted to see ourselves you know, make a home and make a life. And we have a son who's growing up here in this community, going to the same daycare that my wife went to, you wow. know, and so some of those things come together yeah. for us in a really wonderful way. Very cool. But it was just so important for me to keep my life in music going and make a positive impact in my community through what I love so much. And that is music and singing and opera. I love and it. so this opportunity that came up when the position became available last year, I just, it was a, a no brainer for me to throw my hat into the ring for it. And I'm very lucky to have the job awesome. and I'm excited to see how we can continue to grow and become even more embedded into this community after 26 years. You know, there are still, like you said, people in this community that don't know we exist. Right. I did. And we're, yeah. I apologize. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's totally fine. It's, it's actually quite normal for me to find that out. Right. Right. And so it's, you know, one of my greatest challenges, but also greatest opportunities is to welcome new people into the joy of opera. I love it. And opera is such a beautiful thing because it involves all the art forms. Mm -hmm. You have painting, you have scenic design, you have costume design, you have makeup, you have wigs, you have orchestra. So you have the musicians in the orchestra, and then you have the singers and musicians on the stage. And all of this comes together to make one magical moment of right. storytelling. And if you think about the beginning of opera, 
and how everything kind of grew from that. We have musical theater came out of the opera tradition. Movies came out of the musical theater and opera tradition. Sure. You know, all of them have their own genre and their own kind of touch on yeah. the art. But it's all storytelling through beauty and music and just gives an opportunity to take people out of their current situation and current life to be transported on a journey for, you know, two to three hours. Definitely. And a lot of the stereotypes of singing and being loud and, you know, warbling sounds where mm -hmm. people are shaking their voices and all that, that's that's really the stereotype. And sure. At this day and age, we've really learned to look past stereotypes, and I hope people continue to do that for the opera. Because if you come and it's in a foreign language, we have super titles. So it's no different than watching a foreign film on Netflix. That's that's very reassuring, actually. Yeah. Because so, I've, seen, I've seen operas not for forever when I was younger. And, I mean, you're like, well, it's beautiful. And, yeah, the set design is great, but I don't know what they're saying. Yeah. You know? And that comes back down to every word is translated in real time for you wow. on a screen above the stage. Very cool. So you can follow along in the action. Mm -hmm. You're right there with it. And then we offer pre-opera talks mm -hmm. and other education to help you understand oh, cool. the plot and the story ahead of time. And so you can just go and enjoy a night in the theater. Love it. You know, a lot of operas are right in that two to two and a half hour range, mm -hmm. which seems long, but we've all sat through a longer Marvel movie, right, at some point. And in <laughs> yes. the Marvel movie, we don't have a 15 minute intermission where you can go get a beverage. Right. Which okay. is kind of a nice. You've, kind sold, of, you've sold me. Right. Going exactly. to the opera. <laughs> yeah. As people should. I hope they seek it out for what it is. Well, now Cedar Rapids does not have an opera house. Correct. That's where, true. where do we go see the operas? So we do our programming in quite a few different locations throughout the year, depending okay. on the production. But our okay. main production happens at the Paramount. Yep. And in Cedar Rapids, yep. we're really lucky to have such a beautiful facility. For sure. And so if you haven't had a chance to be in the Paramount, Paramount see Paramount's beautiful. It. I mean, any it, just go find something this weekend and go see it. Correct. Yeah. There's yeah. stuff happening all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the next thing at the Paramount is the vocal competition mm -hmm. on the 31st, which is something that we're doing that is new. But I'll talk about that more in a minute. Awesome. Um, so we talked about young artist programs, um, and we're really grateful to the Smith family um, for making this young artist program into the future possible. So mm -hmm. they're called the Smith Young Artists. So thank you to John and Diane Smith for their support yeah. as yep. they've Fantastic. made this possible for just the next generation of singers to come forward. Um, but another kind of line of our programming is our children's opera. Mm -hmm. And so for every, every year for, I think, over 20 years now, we've had a children's opera that goes into the Cedar Rapids Community School District Elementary Schools and performs a full show, a 45-minute children's show, okay. in costumes, with a set, with piano, and brings the production and the story to the students. And so we're really excited. In October this year, we're bringing The Littlest Mermaid, which is the Rusalka story, which is the Czech fairy tale. Okay. And so that'll be going to the schools um, all through the, the month of October. Obviously, that goes hand in hand with Czech heritage and the Cedar Correct. Rapids and all that. And this yeah. is such a big year for the Czech Museum yep. and the Czech community in Cedar Rapids with the 50th anniversary. They're doing their clock tower. The clock tower. You exactly. watch my, he's, he's plugging my lunch with friends. My last lunch with friends with Andy Whiting with the Czech mm -hmm. and Slovak Museum talking about the clock tower. So exactly. this is the season of Czech heritage. Exactly. <laughs> and it all comes together. We're all a part of this community. So yep. if you come to the dedication of the clock tower, I'll be there singing. Oh the National my Anthem. gosh, that's awesome! So it's we all kind of work together and come together to so create cool. this community in Cedar Rapids. Yeah, and that's something that I think is often overlooked mm -hmm. is that all of the organizations in Cedar Rapids are trying their best to work together to provide the best cultural experience. Yeah, for those that choose to live here. I love it. And we have all the things a larger city can offer. Mm -hmm. You know, great food. Yes. You know, everything all over. We haven't talked about those really. We will in a second. Yeah, but yeah. there's so <laughs> many great opportunities to be involved and to be a part of a, a community that's bigger than the footprint of Cedar Rapids. Yeah, for sure. Right here. And so that children's opera, off of my tangent, goes out and we perform for about 4,000 students every year. Okay. And that's uh, free of charge for the students. So it's a free have, public performance. Uh, do you have a, a schedule yet of like which schools they're going to perform at? Or are they going to perform at all of the Cedar Rapids so schools? So we do it on a two-year rotation because there's not enough time to go sure. to all. I think sure, there's sure. just over 20 yeah. Cedar Rapids. That's a lot schools. of performances. Yeah. yeah. So this year I think we're hitting 12 of them. Okay. Um, I don't have the whole list memorized on top of my head, nor the dates or times, but right, we will right. have that published. Awesome. But um, on our website, we have a free performance at the Cedar Rapids Public library downtown okay and we're also for our friends down in coralville having a public performance at the iowa children's museum oh cool and okay. those are both free um and open to the public awesome and so it's and are those happening what are those happening or generally those are happening the second and third weekends of october of october so this fall look for that and definitely i'll have the link to their website in the 
stuff below the video so you can check that out. <laughs> so there's just so much going on with that, and we have the young artists that come in to perform that. Mm -hmm. They'll be doing concerts around town and promo events and working with high school students as well. We do a Lift Every Voice program, okay. which is our kind of dedication to the next you know, level of education. We work hard in the elementary level. We're identifying what we can do for the middle school level. Uh -huh. But in the high school level, we offer free voice lessons to students and do master classes and performances for them to see singing on a different level, on right. a different sc a scale. Right. There's so many great opportunities in town on the musical theater track, sure. but there really aren't that many opportunities for classical singing. Yep. You know, we for have sure. the solo ensemble contests that happen mm -hmm. for the high schoolers throughout the state of Iowa, and there's all state choir. And, you know, we have the musical theater and the musical and the show choirs, but for classical singing, there's really not a lot of outlets yeah. for that. Yeah, so we're yeah. trying to find a way to be a bigger outlet in this community for people who want to sing. So a couple things real quick then. So one, is it, is, this, is CR Opera, is it a nonprofit? It is a nonprofit. It's a nonprofit. Okay. Yep. So, and your performers, I'm assuming not paid. Are paid. Are paid. Ev that's something Very we're cool. really proud of. Awesome. Is that everyone who participates in a Cedar Rapids Opera production is paid. So they're professionals. But they're I'm guessing it's not full-time gig or? It is not. It's not. per contract. Okay. So we do... A, a remarkable amount of work with very little staff. So wow. it's myself, one other full-time person, and then our artistic director. Wow. Okay. And then we contract well over 150 independent contractors throughout wow. the year. And we bring them to Cedar Rapids. They come from all over? Or? They come from all over, but we also hire so many local people. That's because that was what I was wondering. If people wanted to get involved with CR Opera, like what are the opportunities there? Yeah, so we do a community chorus okay. that performs in our show. So that's okay. around 25 or so okay. people. Awesome. Um, we do our cabaret performance, which is all local talent Very that cool. goes into that. Yeah. And then we use um, local talent for promos and other concerts and events throughout the year. Awesome. But we also audition in town for mm -hmm. young artists. So there are a lot of young artists that are relatively local. Um, actually, for October, for our children's show, one of the singers in that soprano, Sarah Rosales, is local. She's shout out to here. Sarah. Yeah, shout yeah. out to Sarah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. And so we we have such a, a wide net of where we cast from, but we always kind of keep track of our roots and where we are. Heck yeah. And so that's really kind of a wonderful opportunity to lift people up from here, but also bring in talent to experience Cedar Rapids. Mm -hmm. You know, I I mean, I moved here. Yeah. You know, yeah, right? having lived in Chicago and New York and yeah. all these other places. I and then it. I yeah. have, you know, my other really good friend in town, Abby Rethwish, mm -hmm. um, is a Metropolitan Opera Soprano, grew up in Iowa City, but now lives in Cedar Rapids. Wow. You know, Very but cool. she's taking contracts in New York and L.A. Mm -hmm. and all over the country all the year. But this is home. I love it. And so that's something that's that great. we pride ourselves on is that yeah. we bring people in and they realize it's kind of wonderful here. Mm -hmm. And so we're working on keeping people moving here and keeping yeah. that going. Definitely. Um, so very those cool. are kind of the pillars of our education, and okay. I can talk for you know days on all the things. I, you're very passionate, Tad. You're definitely the well, guy. I love it. I know yeah, I you're, the, you're the guy to be to be doing this. That's awesome. Um, so just real quick, because we're going on almost we're at 13 minutes. Oh, wow. I haven't really had to ask that much, which has been great because you just got you got all the information. So just really quick. So the first, like, if somebody saw this video and like, oh my gosh, I want to experience this right now. What's the next event that they can go check so out? So our next event is the Esther and Myron Wilson vocal competition. Uh, yes. We'll have a link on the I'll throw uh, it comments. in there for sure. Yeah. But this competition is something new this year, and we're having nine professional singers from across the world. Wow. We had okay. 485 applicants, and that represented 10 countries, all apply to be here for the finals. And the wow. finals are happening live at the Paramount Very on August cool. 31st. August 31st. And so all the singers will be singing two arias in the afternoon, and then the five finalists from the semifinal round, we'll sing two arias in the evening round. Wow. And we're bringing in three judges from around the country. Okay. High level judges to, to critique and to, you know, rate them. And we'll be handing out over $50,000 in prize money wow. for that competition. Oh my gosh. So tickets are readily available. There's yeah. general admission. One ticket gets you into the afternoon and the evening. Okay. Um, there are fees associated with buying them online, so we encourage people to go into the Paramount box office or call Kate. in. I'm going to have to talk to you about this. This might be something. This might be a date for us. It, it, it's just a yeah. fun time. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. casual. Come as you are. Come in. Come out. Do what you want to do. Yeah. And just enjoy some of the best singing that's happening in the country right I now. It. I love it. So. All right. Well, so the, uh, the competition... Um, and then throughout the rest of the fall, you've got the children's performances. Children's performances. And uh, more than just at the elementary schools, is there, are there, are there, is it going to be? Like It'll a, be at the library at the in library. the Iowa okay. Children's Museum down okay. in Colville. Okay, so keep an eye out. Go to the website and check out the dates for that. Correct. Now, before, uh, before I go, I can't not, we can't not talk about where we're eating today because we're eating at O's Grill right now on Centerpoint Road. Um, I was introduced to O's Grill through my friend, shout out to Zach, 
um, he got me to the food truck and had one of their amazing euros. And after that, every time I went to the farmer's market, I'd get a euro. Um, and that's been for like several years now. Um, I think they've, I think they've been open up for open here for longer than a year. I think they're going on about two years here at O's. And, um, if you come in here, um, if you're lucky, the owner will come over and talk to you and ask you about how your food is. He's the nicest guy ever. Uh, check out their social media for O's Grill. Um, they're very active on Facebook and everything. Uh, what did we get today? I got the, uh, we both got the platter. Did you go with the Euro meat? I did with the Euro meat. You went with the Euro yeah. meat. I went the Moroccan chicken. Um, it comes with two sides. Got the old falafel pucks because I love these and got a little pita. What'd you get there? I got fries and then a little dessert with some baklava. Gotta love the baklava. So, but yeah, definitely check out O's Grill on Center Point Road. It's great for lunch. Um, it's, it, it can be really quick. Like you can order beforehand, come in, pick it up. You can come in here. You order at the window. It's ready to go. Um, we're going to enjoy it right now. But um, I wanted to really plug them because I, I, I really love I really love them. And um, they've, become a, they've become a really visible part of the community. Um, just with the food truck, like you probably are familiar with O's food truck. And then just finally putting together that hard site, which is so hard for small businesses to get to the point where they can put together, they can get into a hard site. So um, O's Grill is doing great. And come on down, support them on Center Point Road. Support Cedar Support. Cedar Rapids Opera. Yes, please. Yes. Tad, thank you so much for talking to us today about My Cedar pleasure. Rapids Opera. Um, check out the website. It's going to be down there in the comments. And, uh, hey, have a great rest of the week, everybody. Thanks for checking out Lunch with Friends.